Amen. Let's stand up and uh, worship the Lord Jesus. Just always be mindful that when church stuff does get messy or whatever, somebody needs to be the voice that says we need to get to the altar to pray when that arguing jump starts. When Jesus goes out the back door, you follow him. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There is power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil the victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? Oh, there's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Would you live daily as praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. In the blood of the Lamb, of the Lamb. there is power, power, wonder-working power. In the precious blood of the Lamb, oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power. In the blood, in the blood of the Lamb, of the Lamb, there is power, power, wonder-working power. In the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen, amen. Singing the blood songs tonight not make me, I want to ask you to pray again for my mama. She goes for a bone, bone marrow test on Wednesday morning. So if you would please just pray for my, for my mother as she has that test done. What can wash away my sin? Nothing, Nothing but, but the blood, blood of Jesus. Jesus. What can can make me whole again, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon, this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing, this my plea. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. That makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but, but the blood, blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. Oh, I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. Yes, I'm thankful for the blood 
of Jesus. It washes white as snow, sing over blood and over the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Give the Lord praise. Give him glory. You may be seated. Brother Randy, you are Amen. Amen. Thank you for the blood. Well, it's good to see everybody tonight. Sounds like uh, there's a couple of football games on, or there was. There was one game on. Uh, I know my team wasn't in it, so I, I didn't really worry too much about watching it. But uh, it's good to see everybody here. And starting off your week the right way in God's house. Amen. Uh, before we get started, do we have any prayer requests? Anybody? Yes, Miss Chris. Bill Halverson, the prostate cancer? Yes, he is on our list. We've actually, uh, yes, he's on our list for, for cancer. Seems like we talked about this the other day. Just Wow, okay, so okay, so they've changed doctors, they're making appointments, so it's pretty serious. Obviously, pre, uh, cancer is a serious problem. Yes, Harvey? Okay, Robert Schultz, uh, many of you remember him. He's worked in our video ministry for a while, but he's been out. Uh, he had gone through some some uh, uh, cancer. I, I believe it was bladder. Uh, it sounds like that's back. So Robert Schultz is going to be uh, be going back through some some uh, advising, and I'm sure getting a plan put in place to for for him to uh, to get through this. Uh, so we want to continue lifting up Robert, and we've got Brother Jim. Yes, Mike. Rito Gomez, family stuff, okay, okay, Rito Gomez, and then uh, again, Brother Jim, praise the Lord, he's home, he's doing good, Courtney's parents, we want to continue praying for, them. are they home now, or are they in the, okay. Okay, so Courtney's dad, it looks like he's going to be in long-term, long-term care. He's going through some stuff. So we miss them. They're, again, I think I mention it almost every week. They sit right here on the front row. They are such a blessing to us. So we want to lift them up, continue lifting up Courtney. Uh, my, uh, uh, Matt mentioned this morning that she, uh, she may be delivering early, possibly at, possibly at 36 weeks. So let's pray for, pray for those babies. And Rebecca Starr, she's 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 having okay. She's having a procedure not this Monday, but next Monday. And then Jan is having a procedure February eighth. Brother Jim, ninth, eighth, February eighth. Okay, Brother Jim gets his pathology results back on February 9th. We need to pray for positive results there. Uh, Bob Vandergriff, uh, he's doing well. Uh, it was good to see his son here again this morning. Uh, they're going through some things. We want to lift his son up, his son David. Uh, he's, he's got some personal things going on, uh, but he is praising Jesus. So uh, we want to lift up Bob and David and, and obviously Miss Chris. Sherry Wolf started her fourth round last week. She's doing good, according to David. Bill and Phyllis Myers, we want to continue lifting them up. Uh, Jim Harris Jr. has got lung cancer. Let's lift, be sure we lift him up. Uh, Lisa Payne, we want to be praying for her family. You know, she wants to see them get back in God's house and, and that desire for the Lord. Uh, Stacy Bruni uh, is going through radiation still. That's Debbie Ocker's daughter. 
Uh, we want to lift her. And then Ricky Nelson is supposed to be finding information out this week on his throat. Uh, he does have some type of cancer. They're, they're trying to figure out what it is. Is it tongue? Is it throat? Is it something else? So he's supposed to find out something this week. I don't know what. I don't know if he's finding out what doctor he's going to or where he's at on that, but he's got a very positive attitude, and, you know, it, you, it's staying upbeat is one of the best things that we can do is just trust in the Lord, and it's so hard sometimes. Uh, Ken and Andrea Sutcliffe, Sandy and I got to go visit them this, this evening. Uh, they're doing good. Uh, Ken has got ALS. They're the couple that have, have uh, come occasionally on Sunday evenings, uh, sit right about where Mike and Lisa are sitting, somewhere in that area. Uh, just a blessing. They're such good friends. They're, they're uh, Lisa Ritchie's friends. And Lisa has not been here in a couple of weeks. She's been fighting a, uh, some kind of respiratory something going on with her uh, for, for weeks now. And she's on some antibiotics or steroids, and they're, they're going to change some things up. So we want to lift up Lisa. And Lisa has been such a blessing to Ken and Andrea. So uh, let's, let's be sure to lift them up. And other than that, I, I think that's everybody that I've got on the list. Uh, oh, Miss Judy, yes, Brian mentioned her when he was singing. Let's, you know, he's the, the song tonight, We're the Blood of Jesus. He's praying for Mama's blood, and so are we. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the opportunity to be in your house, worshiping you, Jesus, with like-minded believers. Lord, I thank you for this body. Lord, we have so many prayer requests for healing, and Lord, we've gone over those, but we also have praises, Lord, and we want to thank you. We want to thank you for all the good that you do in our lives. We want to thank you for the yes prayers, the no prayers, uh, prayers being answered, and, and the not yet. And some, quite a few of these are the not yet, Lord, and we're waiting and trusting on you. So tonight, as we get into your word, Lord, uh, I pray that you would speak to our hearts and that, that, Lord, we might be able to apply this uh, to our own walk with you, Lord. And it's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. When you came in tonight, I hope you got an outline uh, titled, What Can God Do With a Few? And uh, if you did, then, you, then you'll know that we're in Colossians chapter 4, and we're going to be reading verse 2 through 18. And as we... Uh, as as you stand to read God's Word, I'm going to give you a little bit of background on what's going on here in the book of Colossians. Uh, Paul is uh, writing a letter to, he's wrote this letter to the Colossians, and he's, he also wrote one to, uh, to, for it to be shared. Uh, he wrote the, the letter to the Ephesians about the same time. But he was trying to encourage these churches. The church of, of, Coloss, of Colossus was going through some, some of the same turmoil that we are here today in, in our church and in churches across America. Uh, they were dealing with problems outside the church, being, inter, being brought into the church. And so Paul was writing to Colossus to really encourage them. He was, you know, stay in the faith. Stay in the faith, guys. And, and so what we're going we're gonna to read about some, some people here that Paul is uh, introducing them to and letting them know that these people are on my team. They're, you know what, they're on Team Jesus. And I want you to listen to them. They're praying for you and whatever. So as we read the scripture tonight, uh, we're going we're gonna to really dig into it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain, I'm gonna, I hope that I'm able to clearly explain who these people are and how they relate to us as a church body. So God's word says, beginning in verse 2, Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us, that God would open to us a door for, for the word to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in chains, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom towards those who are outside, redeeming the time. Let your speech always be with grace, seasons with, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Tychicus, Tach, uh, that's a tough name to, to say there. Tychicus, a beloved brother, faithful minister, and fellow servant in the Lord, will tell you all the news about me. I'm sending him to you for this very purpose, that he may know your circumstances and comfort your hearts. With Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you. 
they will make known to you all things which are happening here. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you with Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, about whom you received instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him. And Jesus, who is called Justice, these are, are my only fellow workers for the kingdom of God who are of the circumcision they have proved to be a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you, a bondservant of Christ, greets you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. For I, be, for I bear him witness that he has a great zeal for you and those who are in Laodicea and, and those in Heropolis. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Greet the brethren who are in Laodicea and Nymphos and the church that is in his house. Now, whom, now when this epistle is read among you, see that it is read also in the church of the, the Laodiceans, and that you likewise read the epistle to La Laodicea. And say to Archippus, Archippus, take heed to the ministry that you have received in the Lord, that you may fulfill it. This salutation by my own hand, Paul, remember my chains. Grace be with you. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, please, please speak to our hearts tonight. And it's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. So as we read that, uh, there was a lot of names that are kind of hard to, hard to uh, pronounce. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I listened, I, I, I got my, my app out and, and said the names, and I, I, I heard how they're supposed to be said, but I still stumbled through some of them, because some of these names, they are difficult. But... Uh, you know, God uses people throughout Scripture to fulfill His purposes. He does. And most often, it's a small group or an individual. So while the church is built up of many people, it's often a small faction within the body. It's a small faction that truly build it up and edify it. And Paul was writing to the Colossians to encourage them and letting them know that there were a few who were praying with them for them or coming to support them. He's letting them know these guys are coming or these guys are praying for you. And so as we look at this group that Paul was talking about, uh, it's my prayer that as we go through these people, so that's, we're going to look at each one of those that Paul named. As we go through them, it's my prayer that maybe you might see yourself in one of them because God can use the few and that's who we are. We are the few. Okay, tonight we'll, we'll hopefully it'll become much clearer. But as we look at who are the few, point number one, comforters. Comforters, verse four, or I'm sorry, chapter four, verse seven says, Tychicus, a beloved brother, faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. And under each one of these, I put a, 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 an additional scripture. I'll let you guys read those a little bit later for time's sake. Uh, but... Those scriptures, I, I, I felt like they really went in line with who these characters, who these characters were reading about are. But Tychicus was a faithful co-worker with Paul in the gospel ministry for the purpose of building up the church and, and also in encouraging the church. And he matched the high qualities of a church elder uh, that, that were listed in the scriptures. In Titus 1.9, uh, uh, this is what God's word tells us, he must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as it has been taught so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. So he delivered Paul's messages to, to the Ephesians and to the Colossians uh, to encourage them in their service. And why did he deliver them and why didn't Paul? Well, Paul was in prison. When Paul was writing these letters, he was in prison in Rome. So... Uh, so he sent Tychicus to do this. And when we look at Tychicus, he was a comforter. Tychicus, that's, it, it says that. Paul said that, uh, that he's there to encourage you. And you know what? Many people in here tonight, you are comforters. You, you encourage others. 
you encourage me. So it's, uh, I, I hope that as we, as you look at that, maybe you look at yourself and say, maybe that's, maybe that's who I am. But we've got ten more, or nine more to look at. So, uh, point number two, they were criminals. They were criminals. Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother. And so, well, who was Onesimus? Onesimus was a fugitive slave of Philemon. And he was, uh, Philemon was Paul's friend. He was his good friend. And Onesimus had robbed his master, Philemon, and then he fled to Rome. And the reason he fled to Rome was it was a big city. He could get in there and just hide. You know what? I could just get in, get in with, the, with the crowds. Nobody will know, nobody will know who I am. And, and I'll just hide and take, take, take life one day at a time. Uh, but through divine intervention, divine intervention, uh, Onesimus met Paul while he was there in Rome and while Paul was serving time in prison. And then uh, Paul wrote a letter to, to Philemon, and in, in Philemon uh, 1, 10, chapter 1, verse 10, he says, I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. And then he goes on in verse 11 to say, Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful to both you and me. The name Onesimus means helpful, it means useful, and it means profitable. And it's, it's interesting that Paul said previously he was useless to you, but now he's useful to you and to me. And, you know, before it was, uh, before salvation, on, 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 onis, oh, Onemesis had, <laughs> oh, he had been useless or unprofitable to Philemon, but now he had became immensely beneficial to both his master and to Paul. And as a believer in Christ, Onesimus lived up to his name. So I will say this. If you've ever been imprisoned, if you've ever felt imprisoned, Onesimus is a good picture of what it looks like to be free from the chains, to be free from sin, to be free indeed. And you know what? He was an asset to Paul, to Philemon, to Christians everywhere. And if, if you have been in chains and you're, you are here, you are one of the few, and God will use you, just like he used on, uh, Onesimus. But point number three are the captives. Captives, verse 10a. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you. My fellow prisoner. Aristarchus was a fellow worker with, with Paul. Uh, he's first mentioned in the book of Acts, in Acts 19.29. During, the, during a riot in Ephesus, Aristarchus is described as one of Paul's traveling companions from Macedonia and that was seized by an angry mob, uh, again in, in Acts 19. Uh, we don't know a lot about uh, Ast Aristarchus' background uh, or how he became a Christian. We don't find that when you go through Scripture. Uh, but some scholars believe that he could have been a Jewish convert to Christianity. And uh, he was a captive for Christ, right? He was a captive with Paul. He was spreading the gospel, and he was thrown in prison just like Paul was. And that, so they were in, in prison together. They were captives for Christ. And again, I would say if you've ever felt captive to your sin, maybe, maybe, that's, maybe that's who you align with. You know what? I was captive to my sin. I know I was. And I thank God. I thank God for Jesus and his forgiveness. So, you know what? If you were a captive, maybe this is your testimony. You know what? I was, I was in chains. I was bound. But now I'm free. Now I'm free. Well, point number four is cousins. Cousins or family, right? Uh, verse 10b, he says, with Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. And Mark... Paul's introducing these, the, the church of Colossae and, and also uh, La Laodicea and uh, Hermopolis or whatever the name of the other. He's Because he's, he said share this letter with them as well so that they know what's going on they, you know, so that they're encouraged as well. Well, Mark was, the, the, uh, again, he was the author of the, the book of Mark. He was a believer in the early church mentioned directly only in the book of Acts. That's where we see his name. Uh, he's first mentioned as the son of a woman 
named Mary in Acts 12, 12 is where we see him introduced. Uh, and her house was being used as a place for believers to gather and pray. Uh, later, he's mentioned as a companion to Barnabas and Paul during their travels together in Acts 12, 25. They, they talk a little bit more about him. Uh, but then in this verse, he's mentioned as the, as the cousin of Barnabas. Well, Mark was a helper to Paul and Barnabas on their first missionary journey in Acts, in Acts 13. And like some family members do, Mark fell off. He, he left them uh, for whatever reason. But Paul was very, very disappointed in Mark. and In fact, he, he called him useless, I believe, at one point. And, but we see here now that, that he's come back. He's, he and Paul are, are, are in good graces, and Paul's actually recommending that you listen to him. If he comes, treat him well. He's, he's here to help you. And, you know, when you think about that, God uses our family. He does. And we've got family members here, Patty, you and God. It's such a blessing, such a blessing to see you guys here tonight. And Jan, George, Ashley, Dan. You know, Matt, I mean, guys, God uses family. He uses family to build up the body. Uh, sometimes family go away. You know, I mean, my twin brother served here with, with me for years. He's off serving at another church. So sometimes God uses family to build it up, but then sometimes God, the, the, sometimes family will, will leave, either for good or for bad reasons, and, and they'll go, but we always pray that they either come back or that they're in, they're in God's work. They're, they're doing God's work, and they're, they're doing kingdom stuff. So, uh, you know, I, I praise God for my brother and, and the time that he had here. And I have no ill will. To, I, I'm not disappointed in him because he's somewhere else because he is serving. He is serving. But that happens. That does happen. Uh, but point number five, uh, converts in verse 11. He says, Jesus, who is called justice. And what I read about on this was uh, uh, that he, he possibly took the name Jesus because, uh, because he got saved. And he was Jewish, and he, he took the name Jesus because that's who his model was. But he's justice. His name is Justice. He was one of several Jewish Christians in the, in the church of Rome, or, or at Rome, uh, but the, the awesome thing about this one is, you know, God mentions, or, or uh, Paul mentions him, and then that's really all he says about him. Uh, and, and the great thing is, is that God will use new believers. New believers. You know what? And that's, if you're a new believer, you're a member of the few, and you're here, and God bless you. God bless you. God will use you in mighty ways if you let him, if, if you if you surrender over to him. And, you know, like I said, not a lot said about justice, but we know he was, he was converted, and we know that Paul was saying, hey, this guy is praying for you. He is praying for you. So then we look at number six, and in this group of people, we see uh, uh, comparisons. Comparisons. He says in verse 12, Epaphras, who is one of you. Guys, he's one of you. He's a bond servant for Christ. And Epaphras was, uh, he was a Gentile, just like us. He was a Gentile believer in Christ, just like us. And he was from Colossa. He was actually from, from the, the town of Colossa, where the Colossians church is. And that's in Asia Minor, by the way. And his name appears in the letter to the church there. And Paul says that he is one of you. And writing during his first, uh, first uh, this was uh, Paul, uh, according to Paul while he was writing during his first Roman imprisonment. Epaphras was the one who shared the gospel with the Colossians and possibly started the church there. So Paul, Paul speaks here. Uh, he says, the day you heard the gospel and reminds them that you learned it from Epaphras. He says that in Colossians 1, 6, and 7, earlier in the chapter. So he's reminding them that, hey, y'all remember Epaphras? He's the one that, that brought the word to you. He's the one that started this. <coughs> he's praying for you. 
And it says, Epaphras traveled from Rome to visit Paul, informing Paul about the Colossians' love in the Spirit in Colossians 1.8. So Epaphras went to Paul and let him know, we've got some problems. We've got some problems in the church, and we need to be lifting them up. They're being, they're being tempted by the outside world. Things are happening. The, the, outside, the outside world is trying to come into the church, so we need to encourage them. We need to be lifting them up. And Paul said, I'm writing them a letter, and I'm, you know, I'm going to let them know that we're praying for them and that, you know what, we've got to stand strong in Jesus and not let all these out, outside influences affect the inside, affect this body of Christ. So... Uh, you know, he's, uh, Epaphras is a great example for us because he cared deeply for his fellow believers and for the church. He cared so much about the church that he, was, he wanted to go to Paul and say, hey, I, I need you to write, you know, let these guys know. You know, they need some encouragement. And you know what? He's an example of what God can do with a few because that one person started, started that from his love for Jesus and his love for people. So then point number seven, uh, let's look at the cultured. Cultured, verse 14. Luke, the beloved physician. And I'm going to read this one because 1 Timothy 4.13 says, Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. If we're getting in God's word, we are cultured. We are learning. We are learning. And that's that's with, with, with Luke. Luke was a physician, and he, Paul made it very clear that Luke, the physician, he's, he, he is praying for you guys. And he was, uh, the, the interesting thing is Luke was, was not only a physician, but he was the only Gentile to write any part of the New Testament. Luke was the only one that wasn't a Jewish, with Jewish background, or uh, uh, so... So for a Gentile to, to be writing, to be included in, in God's word. Paul's letter uh, to the Colossians draws distinctions between Luke and other colleagues whenever he says to them that he's of the, circumc uh, of the circumcision. So the other colleagues of the circumcision. Luke was not of the circumcision. The Jews, that was a, a, a custom that they, they had to do. So he was like, hey, he's uh, with the other colleagues of the circumcision. Uh, he said that in, in verse 11 again. But Luke is the, uh, the only New Testament writer that's clearly identifiable as a non-Jew. And I said that a minute ago. <coughs> Excuse me. But a little bit more about Luke. He was well-versed in Greek language. His vocabulary was very eloquent. And he was familiar with sailing. And he had a love for recording geographical details. And we see a lot of that in Luke's writing whenever, when we read the book of Luke. We see a lot of details. And all this would indicate that he was well educated. He was a cultured man. And, uh, and a well-rounded a, a well writer. And I would say that in this body, we've got a lot of well-educated people. We do. We've got people with degrees. But guess what? We've also got high school dropouts. And God can use the cultured and he can use the uncultured. And it doesn't matter where you are what your education looks like, what kind of pedigree you can hang on the wall. God can use you. You are one of the few. Here's a tough one, number eight, uh, corrupted. God, the, God, the few. What, what is corrupted? Why am I saying that? Well, verse 14, uh, he says, and Demas, Luke and Demas greet you. Well, Demas, hmm, you know, uh, Demas was with Paul during his uh, second imprisonment in Rome, at least for a little while. And then something happened, and Demas took off. He said, I'm out of here, Paul. I'm, I'm gone. Uh, and Paul wrote about this in 2 Timothy 4.10, which is a couple of chapters, a couple of books past Colossians, where he's saying, Demas, Demas, and, and you know Luke and Demas, they greet you. He was really excited about Demas, this, this young Christian, possibly. Uh, but what he, what he said in 2 Timothy 4.10 was, Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Demas had abandoned Paul in a time of need. 
Paul was in prison. He was facing a death sentence. And that's when Demas said, I'm out of here. Uh, no doubt Paul was deeply let down by Demas. Uh, it, you know, it's never easy to see a friend. Abandon. It's never easy. Right in the middle of hardship. Mm. But Demas left Rome because he fell in love with the world. How many, how many of us have friends that were here, they were working, they were, and they left? Mm. that's tough mm. you know a lot can be said for Paul's support of Demas though uh, because uh, in 2 Timothy 4 8, he speaks of those who love the Lord he says there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge will award to all who have loved his appearing and then Demas, in comparison to those who love the Lord, who love, uh, who love Jesus' return, uh, he says uh, in 2 Timothy 4, as he said in 2 Timothy 4.10, but sadly nowhere in the Bible do we read uh, that Demas came back and was restored. We don't read that anywhere. And, you know, I've, I know I've got friends like that. I've got friends like that that I saw working. They were faithful, and then they dropped off. What happened to them? They are so far in the world, it's scary. And when you try to reach out to them, they don't return calls because they are dancing with the devil, so to speak. You know, they choose the temporary benefits of this world over the eternal riches of heaven. And today there are still those who seem to receive the word, but then the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, choke out the word, making making. Uh, it unfruitful for them is the way Math, that, that Matthew says it in, in his book in 1322. And, and I'm going to say this, uh, past service is no guarantee of future faithfulness. Guys, we've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. We have got to keep our eyes on Jesus. Uh, you know, we must be born again, as Jesus tells us in John 3. Otherwise, we, we don't have a foundation of faith. And, and this is uh, what, what uh, Paul says in 1 John 2, 19. They went out from us, but, th but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. Demas is possibly a picture of someone here tonight. I don't know. Or maybe online. Demas could be a picture of you. In the church, serving, being seen, going through the motions but not 100% assured of your salvation because you've never made that true commitment to Jesus. And, and this is that, that, that Demas is that person that you, know, you want to sit down with and say, do you know that you know that you know? Do, do you? Can you truly say that? And Demas just gave it all up for the world, and that's sad. I, I, we don't know anything else about him. Maybe he came back towards the end of Paul's life. Maybe he encountered another Christian somewhere. I would pray that he did because it's so amazing to me that, that somebody could taste the sweet, sweet taste of salvation through Jesus, you know, through the blood that he offers and, and push it away and say, no, thank you. And, and we all have friends that do that, but we just pray for him. We pray for him. So number nine, the commandos. Those are the few. Verse 19, and I say, Arch Archippus, Archippus, take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord that you may fulfill it. In Philemon 2, Paul calls Archippus our fellow soldier. And that's why I went with commando. He says Archippus is our fellow soldier. And we don't know anything about him other than that he was a Christian in the early church who was granted a ministry from the Lord and who soldiered for the faith. And, and as I read about him, I just thought about I'm in the Lord's army. I'm in the Lord's army. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. And, and I thought of BBS and I thought, you know what? I wonder if they wrote that for him because, I mean, is that his song? Because, they, you know, he is... Paul says that he soldiered, he soldiered on for Christ. 
So, you know what? If you've asked Jesus into your heart, guess what? You're a soldier in the Lord's army. We are all soldiers in the Lord's army, and, and I'm so thankful for this group of believers. I'm thankful for those of you that are watching online that have, have taken time to learn what God's Word has to say. Uh, point number 10 is the crucified. Uh, I started with crucifiers, but, but I really liked, uh, you know, this is verse 18. The salutation by my own hand, Paul. Paul says in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, Paul was given the opportunity to do extraordinary things for the kingdom. I mean extraordinary things. Uh, his story is a story of redemption in Christ and a testimony that no one is beyond the saving grace of our Lord. No one is. Paul was killing Christians. He was, number one, he was super religious, religious in the Jewish faith. But he did not like Christians. He was killing them. He was persecuting the church. He was, I mean, he was a bad, bad dude. But you know what? Jesus, he, he met Jesus. He met the light. The light blinded him, and the light gave him his sight when he accepted Jesus as his Savior. And Paul saw the light. Uh, I, you know, I don't know if, if anybody uh, uh, has ever seen the Blues Brothers. It's a hilarious show from the 70s. But when I think of I saw the light, I think of John Belushi doing cartwheels down the, I see the light. It's the light shining in. And I, I, you know what? That's, that's, what, that's what I pray we are. I mean, I said it a couple of weeks ago. I pray that Cornerstone is a beacon of light to the lost world. That when they, look, when they come driving by Cornerstone, they see this beacon of light. And they say, I want to see what that is. And they are attracted to it. And they come to it. And, and, and that they come here. And that they get the opportunity to meet Jesus personally. So, you know, uh, again, Paul stated in Galatians 2.20, that he's been crucified with Christ, and the later years of his life show a visible difference as he lived his life for Jesus and the advancement of the kingdom. And for us, this shows that no matter what our past looks like, no matter what we did in the past, Jesus will forgive us, and he will use us. And it is just so amazing to see how he used Paul. I mean, Paul wrote so many books in the New Testament. Paul is the reason that we, I mean, that we have the New Testament. I mean, if you think about that, all the stuff that he wrote, he gives us so much direction. And he was a sinner, just like you, and just like me, and worse than us. I mean, he was worse than us. And I was, I'm a, I was a bad sinner. So, but uh, number 11, number 11, let's, let's move on. Don't want to camp out here too long. Uh, the called, the called. Mark 3, verses 13 and 14, says, Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to him those he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach. Yeah. Right? The 12 disciples that followed Christ learned from him. They were trained by him. And after his resurrection and ascension, Jesus sent the disciples out. To be his witnesses. They traveled with him. They learned with him. They, they, they got so much from him. But then when he, when he came back. When he went in the grave. Came back. And he sent them off on the. So, you know, Go out and save the world. Go out and spread the word. I've been teaching you. I've been training you. You've been following me. Now it's time for you to take the message out. He had 12. All right. Well we're going to look at who those 12 are real quick. I, I just want to run through it. Just so that we get a picture of, all right, we've seen these, these ten that Paul surrounded himself with and, sent, and, and was really to encourage the church. But let's look at who the twelve were. Andrew, Peter, James, John, the, son, the sons of Zebedee worked as fishermen. Matthew 4, 18 through 22 relates that Andrew and Peter were fishing. That was their trade when they were called. They were just regular old guys, regular old, just like all of us here. 
Uh, James and John were mending their nets with their father, but the Bible also states that both of them were business owners. So we got fishermen, we've got business owners. Uh, Thomas, Nathaniel, and Philip, they were also fishermen. Uh, we can, we can assume that because Jesus appeared to them in John 21, verses 2 and 8, following his resurrection. Matthew was a tax collector. Uh, Simon was a zealot. And, and I had to look that up. What on earth is a zealot? Simon the zealot. Well, zealots engaged in politics and anarchy, attempting to overthrow the Roman government. That's what, that's what they did. So he may have been a politician, possibly a revolutionary. Uh, you know, he went against the grain. Some of us go against the grain, right? Well, uh, when he joined Jesus, he remained zealous, but with allegiance to Jesus rather than a political revolution. Well, who else was with him? Well, a thief. A thief. Judas. He served as the treasurer for the disciples. He was trusted. He, Jesus appointed him to, to, to that, or the apostle, all the, the, the disciples all, I guess they appointed him to the treasurer. But he was trusted so much that they let him handle their money. And, you know, each of the, of the uh, uh, Gospels identify him as the one who betrayed Jesus. Well, you know, as, I'm, as I was looking at the, uh, the disciples, and I looked at that list of people that Paul used, isn't it interesting that Demas and Judas both were right in the light. I mean, Judas walked daily with Jesus for almost three years, side by side, learning from him. I mean, Jesus was there, and he betrayed Jesus. Demas, Paul trusted him and, and considered him a brother. And Demas left him and left, the gospel, left for, the, for the pleasures of this world. That's, that could be any one of us. Any one of us in here, and, and I truly believe that God's Word is full of examples for us to really look at our own hearts. You know, we're all capable of falling, falling down. But for Jesus to have a corrupted person in, as one of those 12, and then for Paul to have a corrupted person as one of his, it just lets us know we've got to be on our guard too, Right? We talked about wise counsel and really getting in God's word and being sure that if, if people are giving us advice, is it, is it true to God's word? Well, there could be a Judas, there could be a Demas among us. I pray that it's not. I pray there's not. But if it could happen with the disciples and it could happen with Paul, it, it can happen with us. So we, we've got to be alert. So yeah, the, there's corrupted, could be, they're, they're part of the few. They're part of the few that God uses. God used those as examples to show us that, you know what? Nobody's perfect but my son Jesus. So be alert, be in prayer, be in God's word. And that takes us to number 12, the committed. The committed. Matthew twenty two thirty seven says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And here it is, guys, the committed Christian. This describes, I want to say it describes you guys. It, it describes uh, our Wednesday night, our Sunday night group. Truly, truly committed. Our Sunday morning, I, I will say that, that looking around this morning, I saw a lot of committed Christians Guys, Brother Jim has been out. He's been out for months. And people are, st the, the committed are still here. You know why they're here? Because they're here for the body. They're here for Jesus. And they're here because, because of their love for Jesus. And yes, we love our pastor and we want the best for him. But Cornerstone, with or without Jim, Cornerstone has got to continue being a beacon of light. And it's the committed. It's the committed. So, you know what? We're not here because it's convenient. I, I know a lot of us work. A lot of us have kids that are in school. A lot of us have, need to be cooking dinner for our families. Uh, some of us uh, that are online. You know, we've got so many things going on in our life that it's not convenient. But because we're committed, we are here. We're making a way. We're, we we want to be here because 
We want to be praying for those. We want to be learning. And, and we all have commitments. We all have things that come up. And there's reasons why we can't be here. And I'm not casting stones at people that aren't here. But, but what I am saying is that, you know what, when we come in these doors day in, week in, week out, we, we try to come and support our youth for a chili cook-off or, or we've got, you know, something going on with a ladies group or whatever it is. When we're supporting each other, that is showing commitment to, to not only to our body, but to Christ. I've said this before, that the, the cross was not convenient for Jesus it was not convenient. He did not want to do that. He asked, Lord, please take this, uh, Father, please take this cup from me. If it's your will, not mine. God said, no. I need you to do that, son, because you're the salvation of the world. And Jesus did it. That was not convenient for him. That was not convenient at all. And so I would, I would say, uh, below the committed Christian, the committed Christian point number one or bullet point number one, uh, prays for their church and others. The committed Christian prays. Well, secondly, the committed Christian is committed to their worship of God. They are committed to it. And, you know, when we worship God, we enter into the presence of God when we're worshiping Him. And David spoke of his worship to God in terms of coming before his presence with singing, Brian, with singing, with singing, entering into his gates with thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm able to be here. Thank you, Jesus, that my, my, my friends and family are here with thanksgiving. And then into his, uh, entering into his courts with praise. He says all this in Psalms 100, Psalm 100, verse 4. Singing, thanksgiving, and praise. And that's what we do when we come in here on Sunday morning, on Sunday night, and on Wednesday night. We come in singing, thanking God, and praising. And so finally, the, the last point, the committed Christian is committed to their responsibilities from God. And some of those responsibilities are in the area of personal development. Our responsibility is to get into God's Word, to learn what we can our responsibility is to get with like-minded believers and lift up prayer, lift up the body, share Jesus with others, invite friends to come. But uh, it's also uh, our outreach, our relationships with others. Those are all our responsibilities and our devotion to learning more about our Savior. And as we've seen tonight, God uses all types of, to build up this body of believers that we have. And you are the few that God can use. And he can use each one of us in awesome, awesome ways. If we pray about it, if we surrender, and we don't draw a line in the sand and say, you know what, I don't know how to do that, so I'm not going to do it. God will equip you. He will equip the called. He doesn't, he doesn't call the equipped. We've said that many times. He equips the called. So if you're committed, God will use you. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, tonight, Lord, I pray that in all these examples that we saw, different, different people that you've used, the few, Lord, that we fit into one or many of those categories and that we can see ourselves in some of these people that we're introduced to in your word. Lord, I thank you that you give us examples of people just like us, that we can see what they've gone through and we can learn from it. And Lord, maybe we can even try to be more like some of them in their walk with you because obviously they're in your, your word for a reason. They're role models for us. But you, Jesus, are the ultimate role model. And Lord, it's my prayer that we try more and more to be like you, Jesus, to love others, to serve others and to just lift others up in prayer for their needs. Lord, put that in our hearts if it's not there. And if it is there, put it, make it even stronger. And it's my prayer tonight, Lord, that if maybe, maybe one person here or one online recognize themselves as possibly a, a Demas or a Judas, that, that, Lord, they get right tonight. Lord, they don't have to keep, they don't have to stay in that category. 
they can get out of that corrupt category tonight by saying, dear Jesus, I need you. I know that I need you. I'm a sinner, and I'm, I, I can't help myself. I need you, Jesus, to save me. It's that simple. Save me, Lord. We've seen throughout God's word. Save me, Jesus. Save me, and he saves. Jesus will surely save you if you ask him into your heart tonight. If you said that prayer, please call the number at the bottom of the screen if you're online. If you're here tonight and, and you said tonight, I want to be 100% sure because I don't want to fall off. Come up and pray with us. Come, let us know. And we're going to rejoice with you. But tonight, Lord, please get us home safely. We, we thank you for your love for us. And I, again, Lord, I thank you for the committed Christians, the ones who, Lord, don't come out of convenience, they come out of a commitment. Thank you, Lord. And it's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Well, if we could break up and pray. Uh, I, I went over a little bit long tonight, but hopefully uh, hopefully we saw kind of a reflection in the mirror of maybe where we're at and maybe where we strive to be. So God bless you guys. Love y'all.